Alex, today's episode comes from another listener question. This one comes from Christina, and she had questions on supplements, what to take, what to take together, what not to take together. And I thought that if we did a full episode on all supplements, that that would be an insanely long episode. So I thought that we should narrow it down to, let's say, the top three supplements we believe basically everyone should take. I like that. Let's go ahead and do that. Perfect. So what is number one for you? Number one, um, I'm going to probably start with magnesium. Mm, What a good one. (laughs) What a fave. I'm a a huge fan of supplementing with magnesium for a number of reasons. But I think the very first one is that it is difficult to get through our food and it is going to be tremendously important to a lot of internal functions that we have. Um, Muscular hydration is important as well as the um, muscle contractions, as well as our ability to just get into a restful state as a whole. And I believe the statistic is that 80% of Americans are deficient in magnesium because it is difficult to get through our food, but it is also something that is depleted by stress. And so those two things in conjunction with one another leads, I would say, almost everyone to a place of deficiency if they're not supplementing with magnesium. Like you mentioned, there are ways to get it in food, things like dark leafy greens, nuts, legumes, whole grains, but the Western diet is filled with a lot of processed foods that don't always really prioritize those few things that magnesium has it in. And I think that mentioning stress is so important because I know that that is very prevalent within each person likely listening to this, as well as I always try to mention to clients that because training is a stress on our body, we don't always take that into consideration. And so magnesium can be depleted further if you're regularly training. And so being able to supplement with it is a must for me. Like if we're traveling, the thing that I have to make sure that I have well, it's all three of these supplements, but like magnesium. In fact, just the other day, we were out of it, which almost never happens. And I was like, prime, come through with that next day delivery because I cannot go without my magnesium. Is there specific brands that you like that have a, a magnesium product? I really love, it's just been a tried and true for a really long time, Pure Encapsulations, and they have a really great magnesium glycinate, and it's at 120 milligrams per pill. And then Revive actually has a really great magnesium glycinate too. Uh, And then Legion did just come out with a magnesium recently. It's not a glycinate, but it is also a really solid product to be able to use. Yeah, the form is new. I I haven't seen any other companies use that form quite yet, and I'm blanking on the specific name, but um, the, the magnesium form that I often recommend is going to be magnesium glycinate, and you spoke on Revive. Revive is going to be 100 milligrams per capsule, and so I like either Pure Encapsulations or Revive's magnesium product uh, because of that, because you're able to have greater versatility to the amount that is being taken, and if you need to spread it throughout your day, that will be f- fine. Um, or if you you know, have to have a larger bolus for someone who's just a larger individual that's under a lot of stress, that is also uh, a viable option as well. Yeah. And I think that one thing that, again, I try to mention to clients because supplements can be extremely confusing. Like Christina was asking, I don't know what to take and when to take it or what not to take, is really understanding what the supplement is so that you can better understand why you are using it. So instead of just being like, well, Sue and Alex told me to take magnesium, I'm going to take magnesium. Well, we're we're right and you should take magnesium, but learning that it is an essential dietary mineral and it is used in so many different aspects of your body, it is actually going to be an electrolyte as well. And it's the second most prevalent intracellular cation in the body. And so it is actually going to be a cofactor for over 600 enzymes. So there's a lot of things that magnesium is doing, and it also is going to be required for energy production and carbon metabolism, which are going to be very important for anyone on a day-to-day basis. When we talk about hydration, oftentimes people only think about actual water and then salt. Those are the only two things that people bring to the table, whereas potassium and magnesium play 
just as large of a role as salt to to a degree, especially getting the fluid into the cell. And potassium and, and magnesium are going to kind of work together as well as the sodium to get it in the right place. And so making sure that all three of those are in a good position and you're having an understanding of where your intake of all three of those minerals are going to be is tremendously important if you are trying to uh, maximize your training performance as well as just your overall well-being. And I love that you mentioned hydration because a prolonged lack of magnesium or if someone is deficient, something that they might experience is muscle cramps. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes people just think, oh, I need to get more water in, which definitely helpful there. But being able to make sure that you have some different electrolytes as a whole, like potassium and magnesium, are really going to push that forward. Because another thing within prolonged lack of magnesium can be your blood pressure changing um, and being able to have raised blood pressure or even raised insulin sensitivity. Because like I talked about, it's involved in carb metabolism. So if you are in a place where you aren't getting magnesium, you're stressed, you're depleted from that. And then and you can turn that into that insulin resistance, which makes it extremely difficult to lose weight and just puts you in a less than advantageous position to live day to day because your energy is going to be low too. Exactly. So as you guys have listened to us here, it's probably a good idea to supplement with magnesium. Now, there are many different forms. If you were to go into a vitamin shop today and look at the shelf, they probably have an entire shelf space of different forms of magnesium. What are the the top three forms of magnesium that you would recommend? Glycinate's at the top for me. Uh, and then I think citrate and malate would be other ones that I would recommend from there. Now, the other forms are not going to be bad. We want to have an understanding that some of the different forms of magnesium are going to act better upon the cellular health relative to others being more acting upon the GI tract and working as more of a stool softener relative to what we're trying to accomplish with um, what we're talking about today of improving cellular health and function in those different aspects that Sue talked about. Now, there is going to be actually another form that I often recommend that's not going to have very much of the mineral content of magnesium, but is still very beneficial, and that is magnesium threonate. Magnesium threonate is one of the only forms that is going to be able to break the blood-brain barrier and put your mind at greater ease. And so if you read about magnesium threonate, this is going to be more specific to improving your overall sleep. Now, is magnesium glycinate, citrate, um, malate going to impact your sleep in a positive way? Yes, by getting your body into a more restful state. But, but the magnesium threonate is going to have the lower mineral content and not necessarily act upon the cellular health as much and more so be influencing the mind and breaking that blood-brain barrier to get into a more restful state in kind of a different way. So if you wanted to supplement with magnesium glycinate, maybe um, 100 to 400 milligrams, as well as having the magnesium threonate at around, I think the, because it is a patented form, I believe it's 133 milligrams per serving. If you <laughs> know better than I do, please double check me. But you could have both of those products as part of your, your sleep stack, if you will, to really maximize the opportunity of getting the best sleep possible. For clarity there on the dosage, we normally recommend between 100 milligrams to 400 milligrams to get started, see how you feel with that, and then be able to see, do you need to spread it out throughout the day? Do you need to increase that? And even anecdotally, we've seen benefits up to one gram of supplementing with magnesium. And the great thing about magnesium is there's not going to be a lot of side effects. Your body's really just going to take what it needs and then be able to go from there. So I personally supplement with 400 to 600 milligrams of magnesium. And one other thing I want to mention, which actually brings us perfectly into the next supplement, is that magnesium is going to be required for vitamin D synthesis and activation. And vitamin D is the next supplement that I want to talk about, because especially if you are in the Midwest, you freaking need this. Like if you live in Colorado, sunniest place in the United States, and you are outside, like if you're just inside all the time, you likely still need it. But if you are outside all the time, you might not need to supplement with vitamin D, but especially with the way that I know a lot of people live their lives of spending a majority of time inside, vitamin D supplementation is going to be magnificent for you. 
it's going to make a big difference. Um, it's going to have a very large impact on your energy levels. And I think your mood as well. I think that those are the two biggest pickups. As soon as someone starts to supplement after being in a period of time where their vitamin D levels are low. So those are kind of the two immediate responses that I see with clients who are utilizing it, um, after a time of it being low. And I think that with this as well, this is one of 24 micronutrients that are needed for your body for survival. They're critical for survival. And I love to be able to bring that up because I, again, get it within supplements. It's like, okay, well, can I get that with food? Can I get this with a different thing? Why is everyone trying to sell me something? And I felt that way for, for, for sure before with supplements, but truly learning of, hey, we don't need all these crazy things that are being marketed to us. We just need these three things to be able to function. And knowing that magnesium is going to be something that is an essential nutrient and mineral. And then also knowing that vitamin D is going to be one of 24 micronutrients that are critical for survival. It's like, if I need to survive, then I want to have the things that make it me function the best. And so instead of thinking of, okay, yes, it might improve my mood. Yes, it might do this. Even zooming back further of it's going to improve how your body functions because your body needs it to function. And speaking on function, it's going to improve overall bone health, as well mm -hmm. as immune function, I, th I think is even, even greater tidbit of low vitamin D levels are going to put you in a place where immune function is just going to downregulate. And in seasons of the weather changing, um, being around kiddos, wherever illness is going to arise, you need your immune function to be in an optimal position and having a daily supplementation of vitamin D is going to be one of the easiest ways to ensure that your immune function is in a, a good spot. Yeah. And it's also something that with your immune system, like if you have a cold or a flu frequently, like if you feel like you've been dealing with a cold for a very long time, it literally could be of adding vitamin D in place and being able to see an improvement in that. Um, but it also, like we talked about of improving your mood, but it can help with like seasonal affective disorder of the symptoms that come with that, because a lot of that is from not being able to get the sun in. And so you're not not getting any vitamin D, and then that's taking everything down a level. Absolutely. And other factors and, and probably buzzwords that are going to spark some of your ears as you're listening to this is that it is going to have a, a positive impact on testosterone levels. Mm -hmm. And so as we're in this day and age where it's like, as soon as I see my testosterone levels are not in an optimal position, I'm immediately running and getting on TRT. It's like there are things within dietary intake, within physical activity, within our sleep, within supplementation that we can improve those numbers without immediately having to go to medication. Now, I'm not here to demonize medication whatsoever, but I'm saying that there are certainly things like getting vitamin D levels into a better position that can positively impact your testosterone levels if you find yourself in a lower spot than what you would like. And so that's one thing as well as thyroid function. Yes, I was going to Thyroid function is also huge. And so, I, I mean, I can't even imagine listening to this and then hearing these different things and not already opening up my <laughs> up my phone to like purchase. I, I've pulled over to the side of the road already and I'm like, what are, what are Sue and Alex recommending? Because it's going immediately into my cart. Because <laughs> these two things, if you don't have them supplemented in your regiment now, after hearing this, you have to do it. It's yeah. just, it's a, it's a must to get into place and to have your body functioning in a better position because both of these, and I'm sure that the third one is going to be as well. <laughs> oh. Both of these are, are huge for you feeling your absolute best. And you're only listening to this podcast to improve your knowledge. Well, not only because you love us. Because we're hilarious. <laughs> you love us. That's number one. Number two <laughs> is that you are wanting to improve your knowledge around training and nutrition. And you're also wanting to have your body function in a better state and having these supplements will make that happen. And so, you know, if you're driving, pull over to the side, order these so you don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> We'll have them all linked in the show notes exactly. below. Uh, yeah, the thyroid levels, that's one I've seen with clients so many times. Of They get labs pulled and they're like, my thyroid numbers are low. I need to get on some sort of medication. And I'm like, we might need to do that. But I also see your iron levels are low and your vitamin D levels are low. And those are all going to be a part of your thyroid levels. And so being able to see that big picture instead of just, okay, I'm going to put a Band-Aid on this, it's like, 
like, let's look at what's going to allow our bodies to have these different like functions that all are related to one another. Absolutely. According to a recent survey, 71% of women said they want to increase their glute size. And I get it because I was a part of that 71% until I got my hands on the PD glute program. It is a 16 week program, but we have the first four weeks available for free. And just in case you don't believe us, you don't have to just take my word for it. Take Nicole's word, who said, this 12-week program is unreal. I'm a trainer myself, but holy shit. This glute program is mind blown emoji. I have never felt my glutes engage this much. Or take Kenzie's word for it, who said, the workout has been challenging but straightforward, which is great. I have always loved training legs, but never had a clear plan, so this has been very beneficial. I've seen a noticeable difference in my glutes and legs. It's kind of crazy how well it's been working. So head to the show notes below to access the first four weeks of the PD glute program for free and get results like Nicole, Kenzie, and the thousands of others who have said the same. So we talked about brands for the uh, magnesium. Mm -hmm. Now, are there brands that you specifically like for uh, vitamin D? Yes. Legion did just come out with a vitamin D, which made me very, very happy. It's a vitamin D paired with a vitamin K, which you do see a lot. Another favorite would be Metagenics has a really great vitamin D, um, especially because they have one that has a very, they have different options, but they have one that goes up to a 10 IU. And so that's- 10,000 IU. 10,000 IU, my bad. Um, I was just picturing the 10, I guess, K, 1,000 IU. Uh, and that is one that I will recommend for people, especially if they're in the Midwest and or they're working in an office and all they have is the, what is it, fl fluorescent lights? Yeah, fluorescent. Okay, fluorescent lights. And they don't get any lux throughout the day of seeing the sun or like someone on night shift or something like that. I will say that if you're supplementing with 5,000 or more, I use a vitamin D that you need to be consistently testing your yeah. vitamin D levels because you can get to a place of toxicity, um, which on a, uh, a blood test, they're going to say anything above a hundred, which I think that there is a, a body of literature that's going to spend more time on this specific level, uh, because I think that this level could be pushed up, but that's, you know, TBD. And so having anywhere between what I like to see on a blood panel, you would want to be anywhere between like 50 and 100 is a really good window. And even more optimally, I would personally say between like 50 and 80 is where that vitamin D level is going to be in a good position. So supplement the, the dosage that we want to supplement with, I would recommend probably starting with one to 2000 IUs. Now pay attention to your other products because things like a multivitamin is going to have some vitamin D in there. It's probably not the prioritized uh, ingredient in that product, but there is at least going to be maybe a thousand or 2000 IUs. And so if you're supplementing with another 5,000, that would be a situation where, well, now we've got potentially 7,000 and we may be overdoing it a little bit. So pay attention to all the products that you're taking in. And that's also why I like it, like a vitamin D and a vitamin K. Fantastic because they're going to work together in conjunction to strengthen bone density, as well as the absorption of the vitamin D. But we want to pay attention to all the other products to ensure that we're not getting too much of one or the other. And so having the vitamin D by itself, the vitamin K by itself can be useful. Now, that's not to say that the combo the combo products are bad, but just something to be mindful of as you're building out your supplement stack that you're taking on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, hey, I think that's a great point because someone might ask, hey, I have a multivitamin that has these in it. Am I all good to go? And the answer is maybe, but uh, that's one thing that you've really showed me within different clients of we want to be able to kind of first go by the least amount of supplements that someone has to take. My goal is always for it to be the least amount of supplements that are necessary, not only cost-wise, but just like taking wise, no one wants to take a billion pills in a day. Well, it's also something where I don't want the client to ever feel that they are dependent on supplements, mm -hmm. that they sign up with us and they have to order 15 products. And it's like, well, for me to have the success within my time working with, with them, I had to have these products in place. So then I have to continue to take them forever to maintain this success. And that's not inherently true. Now, are there some individuals that they need to have greater supplementation because of their lifestyle, the way that they consume nutrients and these different factors? Sure. They're, they're, 
are going to be people that need to have more supplementation. And there's just some convenience or like convenience plays a role here of if you're not wanting to get in a good quantity of fiber in your day-to-day, for example, you can supplement with fiber. And that would be a way that you go about it. Not a product you have to have, but for a particular person who's like, dude, I don't want to eat any more food. I don't, I, I don't want to have those delicious raspberries. I don't want to have popcorn at the end of the night. Like you can get fiber from those or you can get it from the the supplement. And if you like the supplement more, that's up to you. Yeah. And what I was saying within the multivitamin is that it might be of your multivitamin has some magnesium, but you might need more or less than that. And then you want to be able to control those things of what makes the most sense for you to have in play. So it is going to be very individualized on that aspect. Yeah. I, I mean, I used to be a nut with this. I used to buy individual ingredients oh, yeah. for everything. And one, it is not more price e- efficient by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> it is more expensive as I guess the the knowledgeable mind would understand. At the time, I was like, I think I'm going to end up saving money because I'm buying all these individually. So I built out my own multivitamin. I built out my own every product for years. I was literally just buying individual ingredients. So own pre-workout too. I was doing my own pre-workout and then measuring all that out to very small <laughs> quantities. I looked like some form of a drug dealer, I would say. Um, but nevertheless, that's not necessarily worth it. And <laughs> the convenience of people creating, um, you know, products that are not just individual can be very nice for for majority of people. Yes. Are you sick and tired of your glutes not growing, turning around in the mirror and seeing a board for a booty? I've been coaching for nearly a decade, helping thousands of women reach their goals. The most common goal, grow my glutes. Women in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and even 60s able to grow their glutes with the guidance of my training programs. And for all this time, I've kept my best glute growth secrets only for my one-on-one clients. And that changes today. We just released our 12-week glute growth program in the PD training app. It is a four-day program with exercise and volume adjustments every three weeks. You can easily access the program through our app and track every single workout. Each exercise will have a detailed video teaching you exactly how to perform each and every movement. And guess what? I am no longer gatekeeping. I'm sharing every single one of my best glute growth secrets inside this program because you are awesome and I want you to have this program. I'm going to give you $25 off, making it a fraction of what you spent at Starbucks this past month. Use code POD. The link to purchase will be in the description. Now let's get back to the show. So we've knocked out magnesium. We've knocked out, almost just gave away the third one. We have knocked out magnesium and we have knocked out vitamin D. What is the third supplement that you believe everyone should be taking? So the other two are pretty much, well, I think there's all like small caveats Mm -hmm. to each of these. Like for vitamin D, it would be something where if you're getting a lot of sun exposure, you're in a place of of high sunlight, you probably, you may not need to supplement with vitamin D. For magnesium, if you were to somehow be eating enough leafy greens to be getting hundreds of milligrams of magnesium, which I highly doubt you are, then you wouldn't need to supplement with magnesium. Now with this one in particular, where I believe that fish oil is tremendously important for the vast majority of individuals, if you are consistently eating a fattier fish throughout your diet on a day-to-day basis, you may not need to supplement with fish oil. But as I've worked with thousands of individuals, I would say less than a half a percent of those people ate enough fish on a regular basis to have enough essential fatty acids in their diet for all the different functions that it is necessary for um, in their body. And so supplementing with fish oil is going to be tremendously important. Yes, I freaking love fish oil. Like these three truly, whenever we travel, like I have to have all three of these and I notice a tremendous difference in how I feel. And you and I have both tried our fair share of supplements, not only for just for us to know because we're interested, maybe the marketing gets us or we're like, okay, is this a good thing to take? But also to be able to give recommendations to clients. We want to be able to give multiple recommendations, be able to talk towards different things that we've tried. And I can say that I've taken time off of fish oil before to see, okay, do I really notice a difference or have I kind of like brainwashed myself here? And I truly notice a difference 
difference in how I feel and how my body functions with having that fish oil in place. With fish oil supplementation, it is going to be on a grading scale. Mm -hmm. Fish oil can be anywhere graded from an A to, I think it's like, uh, I think to G. And there's a lot of different grades that the companies can receive. The lower the grade, the cheaper it is, and they would have to publish their third-party testing to really showcase what that lot of, of supplements that they received graded at. And this is one thing with Revive that I really, really appreciate with their fish oil supplement is that they do the third-party testing and they are often scoring at a low B, or I'm sorry, a high B or a low A with all of their lots, which is going to be tremendously important with, with fish oil, because if you're just getting rancid fish oil, it's not mm -hmm. doing and giving you the benefit that you're seeking through the product. And another thing that I really like with Revive's product is that the capsules themselves are enterocoded. And so you have a greater possibility or greater likelihood of absorption with that coating on the particular um, soft gel. And so those two things alongside the, the dosage that's going to be necessary to consume on a day-to-day -day basis to get the blood content level of omega-3s in the right position, um, I'm a huge fan of Revive's product. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Legion's product personally. Uh, it's one that they've done a lot of testing on the type and quality of fish that they are using as well. And it has just been really cool to see what those studies are saying. But within fish oil, I want you to go if you're at home or if you're listening to this and you're getting home and you're like, well, I have fish oil in my cabinet. I'll just go ahead and use that turn around the label, and instead of looking of just where it says omega-3 fatty um, acids, I want you to go to where it says the EPA and DHA because that is going to be the most important part here. And you want a minimum of 500 milligrams of EPA and DHA, not combined numbers, each EPA and DHA, a minimum of 500 milligrams. And that is going to really tell you what's going to be the best for the dosage. So if you go ahead and just grab one from the grocery store, you might still be able to use that fish oil, but you might have to take more pills or soft gels than what's listed on the side of the bottle because it doesn't have enough EPA or DHA in it. Sure. And so the, the total amount of omega-3s that we want to have is going to be roughly two grams. And, and oftentimes, I think with Legion's product, it's four grams, mm -hmm. which is going to be kind of like, if you take in four grams, you are 100% getting to the blood index that you would need to have. I believe the optimal spot for omega-3s is going to be 8% of the blood index is going to be the correct spot. Again, double check me on that. <laughs> but um, a minimum of, of two grams is going to get you to that threshold. Four grams is going to basically put the nail in the coffin that you're for sure getting there. And so supplementing in that window is going to be advantageous, but some of these lower quality ones that are going to have, I mean, I see some that are wild to me, like, um, they'll have a hundred milligrams of EPA and then they'll have like 60 some odd milligrams of DHA, DHA. Now, as Sue just talked about of at minimum having 500 of each, but then at the total gram quantity that I'm speaking to, you're going to have to take like 40 of them a day. Yeah. So it's like, at that point, you should just get a better quality product in general. Mm -hmm. And that should be your, your, you're putting it in your body. Anything you're putting in your body, you should be going for maximal quality in my opinion. Yeah. Or yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I was about to get into a side tangent of tattoos <laughs> of like putting on, it's on your body forever, but that's not oh my the topic for today. And what do you know? EPA and DHA are essential for your body to function. And one really cool thing about fish oil is that it's gonna be balancing the amount of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids. So when it comes to the type of um, fats that we are consuming on a day-to-day -day basis, we get plenty of omega-6 fatty acids in place. The ratio that it is studied and said we should be at when it comes to omega-6 to omega-3 are going to be a one-to-one -one or a two-to-one ratio. The most recent study that I read showed that in the Western diet is at a 14-to-1 ratio. Wow which is not good yeah. at all. And so it is going to be great to be able to get those omega-3 fatty acids in to be able to help within that ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. 
but what are some of the benefits of having that fish oil in place? The first one that comes to mind for me is, is lowered inflammatory response. And with many of the, the clients who come to us, they're dealing with greater stress and just honestly chronic stress more often than not. And so getting them into a lessened inflammatory state is huge. And getting in an adequate fo- uh, amount of fish oil is one of our first steps oftentimes. And so that's really big, as well as lowering total cholesterol. Um, So those two would be big rocks in terms of overall benefit. And it can help with faster fat loss and better muscle gains, which I know I personally am all about. I don't know about you, but it also is going to help with lowering any kind of risk of heart disease um, and being able to help when it comes to um, just your triglycerides and your blood pressure as a whole. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's one of those products that, and these are all three things that if I was to be getting product for my parents, if I was to be getting product for my grandparents, these are all three things that I would recommend to them as well. Mm-hmm. Like when I say everyone, I really, <laughs> to my core, mean that. Yeah. So I, I would highly suggest all three of these products. And it's great that you mentioned that because literally we both have bought these for our parents yes. and made sure that they take them because they're just going to help you feel better. They're going to help you function better. They're going to help you perform better. And who doesn't want that? Yeah, I mean, I still would be purchasing them for my parents if I was with them every day and could force it down their throat instead of (laughs) checking in once a week of like, hey, did you take those? Oh, I forgot. (laughs) <laughs> Please take them. But one thing, if you do feel like you have a hard time taking your supplements, a thing that's been a game changer for Alex and I is we have little like... Mine's a little espresso. Cup, yeah. yeah. Mine's a little cup my sister got that says like looking like a snack on it or yeah. something. But it's just like a tiny little ceramic cup and I have it on the counter. Like I don't put it away because then when I pass that, I'm like, oh crap, I got to put my supplements in it. And this helps because I used to be the person that I would get my supplements and then I would put them in my pocket. And let me tell you, once you have washed a few rounds of clothes with supplements in your pocket, you vow to never do it again. And then it would also be that I never took the supplements because they stayed in my pocket. And so being able to have that little cup, it's so great because you see it. And then when we're putting our meals together, then we go ahead and put our supplements in it. And so then at the end of the meal, if I look and the supplements are still in there, then it's just sure a good reminder to be able to take them. I don't, I don't forget like you do on that. I feel like that is a, a you thing. That is a very common, th- you don't get clients saying like, I had a hard time remembering to take my supplements. Maybe. Maybe. Off the, off the top of my head, not right this moment. I'm saying I, I don't feel like I forget to take my supplements because- I'm not talking to you. I, I know I'm speaking for myself. I'm speaking, in, I'm in conversation with you right now. I know everyone here is listening, but I'm talking to you. And so what I'm saying is, is that I like to take my supplements with my food. So I'll have a couple bites of food. I'll take- I. I can only take, like you can take 50 pills at a time. Yeah. I Just have like- kind a, of put them in and swallow. I have a, a cap of like four. I, I do not <laughs> like taking more than four uh, pills at a time. And I like the- it, the products to be different. I don't like taking all, like if I have four <laughs> capsules of one product, I don't like to take them all at one time. So like if I have multiple products, I'll have the four be different. Yeah. <laughs> and then I take them through my meal and I feel like they sit the best on my stomach when I take them like that as I'm eating my food relative to taking them before my meal or after my meal. Um, now there are some supplements that you have to take prior to your meal uh, to ensure the benefit of what you're taking. But for the great greater majority, you can take, you're supposed to take them with food. And so it works out well to take them as you're um, having the food. I guess we can close this off with a little debate on how to take supplements. So sure, go ahead. How do you prefer to take supplements? All right, guys, this is the number one way to take all of your supplements. You will take your cup of water. You will put a small amount of water in your mouth, not a big gulp, just a little bit to get the, uh, the wet your whistle, wet your whistle. Then you're going to put the the capsules in your mouth. Only four because above that is a little crazy. Then you're going to take another swig of water. It's going to go, it's going to roll down your throat. It's going to be so easy to take. It's not even going to ever be an issue. And then you're done. Or you can just throw the supplements in your mouth and then take a sip of water and be done. Now, we can take a list here or we can take a vote. How many times have you ever seen me 
choke and almost die on my supplements. Multiple times. Zero. Multiple How many times have I seen you do that? Hundreds. No, I've not choked and almost died. Because I have this microphone here, I do not want to give a example of what this yeah, looks like. Yeah, because you've never seen it. Because I have seen it. And what happens is that she... It, like the water's coming out of her nose. She's no, coughing. I've literally never had a liquid come out of my nose. Let me tell you, the only times that I've like had issues is when I don't drink enough water afterwards where it's like my water bottle's almost empty. And so I'm like really at the end of the water. And then I'm just like, I'll just try and swallow it anyways. And then it gets like stuck like right here and you have to kind of like cough it back up uh. to then take it. What? You act like that's so odd. That's like, gross. Would I rather just shit s- sit in my throat? No, I'd, I'd rather you have enough water beforehand to actually Well, if you them. didn't always take my water oh, from my water here we bottle, go. then Is I would right? be fine. No, I don't think so. I think you just need to be more prepared. Oh, goodness gracious. Well, that is what we have today for the three supplements that you are likely deficient in, the three supplements that we highly recommend, and our three favorite supplements. And we'll have the links for all of them in the show notes. Do you have anything else to say about any of these supplements? If you guys have any other questions on supplements, let us know and we'll uh, potentially make another episode for them. Make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Make sure that you like this video. Leave us a comment on how awesome we are and we'll see you in the next episode. Yeah. Share this with a friend that also needs these supplements in their life.